Today, I'm gonna to share with you how to burn fat at home over the age of 50, your ultimate fitness and nutrition guide. Who am I? I'm Brian Stecker. I'm the owner of Boomer Fitness for the past eight years in Vancouver, Washington, and I've been a personal trainer for the past 16 years. As a personal trainer, um, one of the biggest challenges a lot of my clients have are where do they start when working out at home? And this can be a frustrating thing because they try many of things. Uh, they buy some exercise equipment, they buy the new fancy gadget that's on TV, uh, they get the new weight loss supplement, or they pick up where they left off with an old program. And what it ends up doing for people is it leaves them very frustrated because they don't make the progress that they know they deserve when creating a long-term plan. So there's two areas that I wanna talk about specifically for you today, so that way you can make some major traction in your fitness goals and your fat loss goals. And by the end of this video, you'll have all of that so that way you can make some progress and you're gonna be feeling better about all those things. So the number one thing uh, you wanna look at is, is, is two areas. So the first one you wanna look at when starting out with a fat burning plan, an exercise plan from working at home is you wanna look at your nutrition and then the second one you wanna look at is your exercise. So those are two key areas that we wanna focus on today. So when you're looking at your nutrition and you're starting out, First and foremost, you wanna find out what your BMR is, your basal metabolic rate. Those are the calories that you're going to burn on a daily basis um, just at rest, okay? So you can find your BMR very simply by Googling BMR calculator. And when you find that BMR calculator, it's gonna give you a uh, calorie target, okay? This is what I use for all my clients when starting them out. It's nothing fancy, but at the end of the day, to burn body fat, it's calories in and calories out, all right? Say it with me, calories in versus calories out. There's nothing sexy about it, but it's gonna get the job done and you're gonna get some sexy results. So once you figure out what your BMR is, we need to find out a healthy way to sustain this. So uh, the first three letters of diet is die. Okay, that's what a lot of people do. They feel like they're giving something up, they feel like they're malnourished, and that's not gonna be sustainable. Um, when you're starting on this a long-term journey with your health, with, with nutrition specifically, you wanna make sure that this is sustainable. All right, so you wanna come up with a list of foods, and these lists of foods are gonna be th made up of three major macronutrients. Those are proteins, those are carbohydrates, and those are fats. And there's some higher quality proteins there's higher quality carbohydrates, high quality fats, and those are the ones that we wanna to stick to. When it comes to protein, you're th looking for things like chicken, lean ground chicken, lean ground turkey, lean ground beef. You're looking for fish. Um, you're looking for certain uh, vegan sources of protein, pea protein, tofu. Um, all those are complete sources of protein that are gonna give you all the branched-chain amino acids that are gonna help you maintain or even build muscle. Okay, that's very important to have those nutrients over the ages of 50. And the reason why is because over the ages of 30, we begin to lose 3% of our muscle per year. So it's important to get those nutrients. Protein also is gonna help us feel full. So we're not gonna feel deprived on our journey of burning fat, uh, body fat and being in a calorie deficit. All right, so that's the first thing. Then you wanna get some good carbohydrates, brown rice, white rice, you know, sweet potatoes, vegetables. So those are good sources of carbohydrates. Next one, uh, good fats, almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter, olive oil, avocados. Those are a good place to start, all right? So now that you got your list of foods, you wanna start, you know, uh, just start out with this. Just start eating from that food list, okay? Just start eating for that food list for that first week till you start feeling full. Eat a good quality protein, get a good quality fat, eat a good quality carbohydrate, and just that first week, eat those foods, all right? After that first week, you're gonna start seeing which foods that you like the best, all right? Now that you've got that list of foods, you're then gonna start tracking that. You're gonna download an app like MyFitnessPal. It's a, it's a really great app, it's free, and you're gonna start logging your food. So your goal, is say your BMR is 1800 calories per day, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set a goal of not exceeding those 1800 calories a day. Because we know, we said it earlier in the video, at the end of the day, to lose body fat, it's calories in, calories out. But what the biggest mistake I see a lot of people do is they make a too big of drop 
in their calories. So maybe their BMR is 1,800 calories a day. They drop down uh, to 1,500 calories a day. And number one thing they feel is that first three letters again. They feel like they're dying. They feel like they're deprived. So in the beginning, I just want you to start out eating as close as you can to that BMR. That's going to help you uh, boost your metabolism. It's going to help you feel full. And it's going to be sustainable long term. And in general, a good target to shoot for on a daily basis when it comes to your macronutrients. And it works really well uh, for most of my clients when starting off. And I've literally... Like if I sit down with one of you and you're one of my clients through the years, just leave a comment down below. But I've started a lot of people at this point, 30% protein, 50% carbohydrates, 20% fat. Okay. And now you're thinking like, man, what about, you know, keto? What about intermittent fasting? What about this diet? What about that? At the end of the day, it's calories in calories out. And I've had clients lose plenty of body fat, um, having 50%, um, carbohydrates because at the end of the day it's calories in calories out carbs are going to give you energy to train so so get your my fitness pal out log your calories from those lists of foods aim for 30 percent of your calories to come from protein uh 50 of that to come from carbohydrates another 20 percent to come from your fats you're going to start doing uh doing that for uh, a period of time so now that you're there that's where we would start with your nutrition um, to take that to a next level, to make sure that you're losing body fat, is you want to begin to start to track these things. So I would get a scale that tracks your body fat, and every single week, I would get on that scale, same time. So what works best for my clients, first thing in the morning, beginning of the week, same time, then plus or minus an hour of it, they use the restroom, they hop on the scale, and they've got a chart, and they chart it. So they could be 200 pounds starting out, 24% body fat. Uh, the next week they log it, 198 and they're 23 and a half percent body fat. That's great. You're tracking it. You're seeing if that nutrition and that exercise plan is helping you uh, move closer to that goal. So you want to track it because the more you can measure something, the more you can manage that thing. So that's what I want you to focus on next. All right. So that's the first component of it. All right is your nutritional aspect of it. Now let's look at exercise. The way I look at exercise in the beginning is, and the reason why I have people eat up to their BMR is, is simply so that way they have more energy and they don't feel like they're depriving it. And the next step is that I add in that exercise component. When I add the exercise component into this, it's to boost your metabolism, okay? So to lose one pound of fat, we know we need to burn 3,500 calories per week. Okay, but the biggest mistake I see people make is they have that BMR of 1800 and they flash it down to 1500 calories a day or 1300 calories a day and they're deprived. What I'd rather have you do is eat a little bit more, have more energy, feel full, feel satisfied and get that excess burn from exercise. Okay, so where do I start with exercise? Say if I had a layoff for a long period of time and a layoff would be longer than six months. Okay, because usually the time you lose conditioning or if I see with my clients, they don't have that conditioning. So the first place you can start to boost your metabolism, working out from home, is to set a step goal. Okay, that's the first thing that I would have you do. Set a step goal. All right, and a good starting step goal for most people is about 7,000 steps per day. And the thing that I like about setting a step goal is getting 7,500 steps a day or 7,000 steps a day isn't going to be very physically demanding on your body. Okay. You're going to be able to do that every single day and to sustain it. And when you're you know doing about 7,500 steps per day, you're going to burn an extra 300 calories. So uh, it's going to give you 2,100 calories a week, approximately you know, three fourths of a pound for you. And that's what's going to help in there. So set your step goal of about 7,000 to 7,500 steps per day. Uh, get yourself a tracker, say like a My Fitness Pal, or you can go on Amazon, um, and you've got some different like Fitbits on there. On there, so if you're on a budget, they've got refurbished ones that work really great, great, and that my clients have used. Um, so you can track it. Okay, so just start tracking your step. Then the second thing is you want to start an exercise routine, and I'm going to give you a very simple exercise routine. And there's plenty on the channel that you can use. And we're talking about specifically at home. All right. So if you're at home, you want to create a dedicated space 
to exercising. Because a lot of times people associate their home as a place to relax. And if you don't have an, a dedicated space for exercise, then what ends up happening is that you try to do it in the living room and maybe your child or your grandchild or your spouse or a family member is going to interrupt you. Something is going to interrupt you. So by having a dedicated space, you're able to go to that space and exercise. The other thing is like I talked about earlier is that home is a place to relax. And if they're looking at, you know, they're relaxing and they don't have that dedicated space, they're just like, nah, I'm chill, whatever. They never get themselves in that mind space, that mental uh, space to want to exercise. So now that you have that dedicated space for myself, it's my garage. Uh, I've got some inspiring posters in there. I've got a treadmill in there. I get in there and uh, I knock it out. So in the beginning, when you're starting out, what I would do for the first 12 weeks is I would focus on seven key movements. It's kind of like art, right? Set a plan for a client. There are these seven movements and it's maybe like one out of every 30 clients, but they're like, nah, you know, this is boring, Brian, this is boring. There needs to be something more exciting. But like, look at Picasso, look at Michelangelo, look at Van Gogh. Like they use the three primary colors they mix them a little bit, they match with it, and they made some masterpieces. Some of my best transformation, it's just, you need to take a pill of consistency and dedication. And they've done these same movement patterns over and over and over again, based off the progression where they're at. So when starting out, so now I got my little rant out of the way. Uh, when starting out, what I would do in your dedicated space is I would focus on these seven basic movements right here, okay? and it would be a calisthenic program twice a week for about the first six, eight weeks, just to build up your conditioning level. And so that way you start to feel you're getting that endurance back, you're starting to get that stability back, you're starting to get that range of motion back. So that way it's not gonna overwhelm your life, you're not gonna be overly sore. So the first one is gonna be a push. The next one is gonna be a pull. The next one is gonna be a squat. The next one's gonna be a lunge. Then you're gonna do a hinge and then a rotation, and then we're taking care of the gait stuff with your walking or your jogging. I would do that for the first of six weeks and set aside two days, okay? Once you get that down, say, you know, the routine could be as simple as doing 15 to 20 repetitions, TRX row or a band row, okay? Next one could be 15 to 20 push-ups of a modified push-up or a regular push-up or a wall push-up, whatever your progression is. Next one, body weight squat, split squat. The lunge could be a supported lunge uh, standing next to a wall or a chair. Um, the hinge could be a single leg RDL, all these that I've demonstrated on the channel, or a rotational exercise, okay, uh, with some pulleys, bands, or balls, all right? So I would focus on those movement patterns in a circuit, 15 to 20 reps, taking anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds per set, doing three rounds of those exercises, okay? Usually after those first of six, eight weeks, you're getting some nice fat loss because you've been tracking your nutrition, you're consistent with your steps, you're getting this routine down, your energy levels are going up, your strength's going up, your endurance is going up. You are really enjoying the process here. So what I would do from there, it just comes up over and over and just pick this up over the years where then people are like, you know, this fat loss thing, uh, working out at home or having a routine is starting to get a little bit boring. So to kind of take things up a next level and make things exciting, right around that eight to 12 week part point, you gotta start setting some specific goals. So set some specific goals around strength training. So set some strength goals, maybe it's to do a pull up, maybe it's to squat a certain weight and maybe it's to bench press a certain amount of weight. And you know, if you're wanting to build muscle, you gotta have a progressive overload uh, program and there's smart ways to approach that and I can show you how to do that. But what you wanna do is set a strength goal, okay? Another area a lot of my clients over 50 talk about is they want flexibility, set a flexibility goal. And then you wanna set an endurance goal. That could be a 5K, could be a Spartan race, it could be a tough mutter. But set yourself a goal right around that 12 week time frame to make it a little bit more exciting and to give yourself something to look forward to in that. So that's when you're gonna take your training from twice a week upwards that three to four times per week. The next point that I would say is that really critical when it comes to exercising from home is set it on a schedule. Find a time in a day 
where it's a non-negotiable. And I mean, I've been saying this since day one in my career is, you know, when you schedule it, this becomes real. So you put it in your schedule, maybe it's three o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon, nothing, no work, no kids, no nothing interrupts that time. Okay. Some days you might get there at 4.15. Just do the best you can for that 45 minutes. Some days it's going to be 4.30 or 3.30 and 30 minutes. Some days you're going to get the whole thing and you want to go in a little bit longer. That is great too. But set it on a schedule to be there at that time every single day so that it becomes habit. The last one, get yourself some accountability. I will get on a soapbox for this one because I can't count how many dollars that I've invested in myself in a coaches to get to a goal. I hire a coach every single year that is going to hold me accountable and also help me focus on the right things that I need to focus on in that step. And then they give me um, adjustments every week or every month that I need to get better at. So the last thing that I would highly stress for you, and I do it myself and I respect the clients that I work with online, is you gotta invest in yourself and get yourself a coach that's gonna hold you accountable, create an exercise plan, help you create a nutrition plan that is sustainable. And that is where um, I'm gonna give you a plug. Um, I've opened up some spots in my coaching program. If you're interested in that, down below, there'll be a link to my calendar where you and I can hop on a call. What this isn't, it's not going to be where we put together your plan on the call. What we're gonna be talking about is what your goals are, what you've tried, what your struggles are, what you've been doing well, and where I can help you. And if it's the right fit, um, you're gonna invest in yourself and we're gonna create this plan together to help you get in the best shape of your life over 50. So just click on that down before and I'd love to work with you. All right, so that with that being said, uh, down in the comment section below, let me know which one of these tips that you think would help you out the most. Okay, let me know which one that if you've been exercising at home has been most helpful to you. And always make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that little gray bell so you can be updated with all the great content that I bring out specifically for you. And then the last tip, if you like this video, uh, hit that like button so that you can share this with other people out there. Brian Secker here again from Boomer Fitness. Have yourself a great day.